So I'm the kind of person who actually like contributes to the YouTube comments and it's not because I expect some positive response but it's because everybody says like oh the YouTube comments don't pay attention to them they're full of jerks and I think always think to myself like how nice would it be for this user to get a nice comment from a nice person? I like to think that I'm a nice person maybe I'm not I don't know I think I'm a nice person I'm a nice person so yeah I use the YouTube comments and I was on this Justin Bieber video and feeling like a Samaritan and somebody was talking about how he looks like a, they, I think they called him a transvestite or something. And so I was like, hey, that's really transphobic, you know, you should not say that. And then somebody was like, oh my god, you're calling him cis scum, oh my god, transphobic, really, really transphobic. And I was like, oh my god, this person has a serious case of the Oppression Olympics. And this is what the Oppression Olympics is. And that's what this video is going to be about. So I would define the Oppression Olympics as when somebody decides that, like, one issue of social justice is legitimate and another is not. So it tends to be either, like, people with privilege saying it's okay to oppress these people but not these people. Or people who are of oppressed group saying, my oppression's bigger than yours. We all agree slavery's bad, but we don't really think the founding of America was a genocide, right? Like, we're, we're still kind of, like, people still hate on Native Americans, right? So it's okay to hate on them. Uh-uh, it's not okay. So, for example, like, I know people who are like, Native Americans endured a genocide, and they're way more oppressed than black people, and I'm like, whoa, that's not productive. Like, sure. 20 million Native Americans died. I can't verify that statistic, but that's what my teacher told me. 20 million Native Americans died and 17 million black people died. Really? We're arguing about that 3 million and deciding that 20 million is like somehow just more worth focusing on than 17 million? I think that's ridiculous. I think that we should look at both of them and say, look, here's a combined 37 million. I don't know why I'm doing so much math right now. Here's a combined 37 million. This is bad. These are two different groups of people and they both endured a genocide and it's all bad. All of it's bad. But instead, people are saying so-and-so is more oppressed than so-and-so. And it's really annoying. It causes a lack of unification. Like, I'm of the opinion that everybody who's brown should feel some affinity, right? I don't care what you are. I don't care if you're Filipino. I don't care if you're Eastern European. I don't care if you're African. I don't care if you're Aboriginal. I think every brown person should be sticking together at least a little bit. Because... If we play this Oppression Olympics game, it becomes divide and conquer for the oppressor. And I know that sounds dramatic saying the oppressor, but like, yes, there are institutions that are oppressing individuals of color, and I think we should stick together. Just like I think anybody who's a WTF, women, trans, femme, anybody who is of a non-dominant gender identity or, perf or performance of gender should stick together. So I should stick together with somebody who's trans or somebody who's queer, or some, or like whatever, and that's why I'm into LGBT issues, because I think we should stick together. So when you play Oppression Olympics, that's not constructive. You're dividing, conquering yourself, basically. Because if I say my oppression's bigger than yours, I face more racism than you, then all that does is like, that's one less person I can have affinity with, and that's really stupid. Take a step back, stop playing Oppression Olympics, Accept that there are a breadth of different kinds of oppression and accept that they are all equally legitimate.